Would somebody like to read Ephesians 4.13 from your seat? Ken will do it. Thank you, Ken. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in faith and in knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Right, very good. May the Lord bless the readings of his word today. We are continuing in our Gospel According to Bob Ross sermon series where we are looking at his more uh, well-known and iconic phrases and quotes that he shared as he taught us all the pain on the joy of painting for so many years and continues to to this day on PBS and online. Hopefully you're able to check him out sometimes other than just when I share a clip with you on Sundays. Uh, but he taught the masses how to paint beautiful landscapes using his famed wet-on-wet technique, which some of our people got to uh, indulge in the other day, and some of our people will again this week. Um, and, and, but as he taught people how to paint, uh, he also taught about life and, and encouraged people. And, uh, and, and I see so many points where he said things that, that, that lead me to think about Scripture and how it informs us to live life and to live it faithfully. So, uh, if you were here for the beginning of it, we started with, we don't make mistakes, we make happy little accidents, we have happy little accidents. Uh, trees cover up a multitude of sins, that was another one that you may remember, um, and, and that was a fun one too. Uh, we also looked at, uh, let me see here, you know what happened when my sheets fell? What do you think happened? <laughs> yep. That's exactly what happened. Um, oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> I, I got page numbers, but you know what? I, to save trees, to save happy little trees, I print one sermon on one side and I print one sermon on the other. So now they all fell. I'm trying to figure out <laughs> which side I'm supposed to be reading on. Uh, the first one doesn't go so good. You yeah, I'll just flip it over. What do you guys think of this one? Uh, you can do anything as long as you believe. And then last Sunday was our fourth installment. We looked at Bob's phrase. It's the imperfections that make something beautiful. That's what makes it different and unique from everything else. We looked at 2 Corinthians chapters 4 and 12 for that. You may remember that one because they called you all a bunch of crackpots for Jesus. Do you remember that? You are a crackpot for Jesus. And he uses those, those imperfect, or these vessels that we are with all of those cracks and imperfections on them to shine his light and his power out through. And he is the one that makes something beautiful of those cracks in our clay jars in our mistakes on life's canvases. And so now we're ready for our next part of this installment, and it's Bob's phrase, and I don't have a clip to share with you today of it, uh, but it, it, it was this, if we all painted the same way, what a boring world that would be. Uh, and I find that quote rather amusing because I'm just guessing that anyone that's ever painted along with Bob Ross uh, judge their own work by how closely theirs resembled it. So, so we were trying to paint like Bob Ross, and, and if, we did, if our paintings didn't look like Bob's, then we feel like we failed. Uh, if the clouds that we painted didn't look like his clouds, if our trees didn't look quite as happy as Bob's trees did, uh, then we feel like we somehow failed. We don't measure up. And I think that we do that in life in a number of ways. Uh, I think, no, I would like to say that I know this to be true, that there is a reason that some people don't come to church. Um, and, and, I'm, and I'm hoping that you are still inviting people to come to church with you. And I don't know if they give you reasons for not showing up or not, but I think and I know that some reason that some people don't come to church is because... And this is funny. They think we've all got life figured out in here. You laugh because you know that's not true. You're here because you need Jesus as bad as I do. 
But they think that. They think we've got life all figured out. They think we've got faith all figured out. They think that our lives are perfectly aligned and go well because of our faith. Um, they think that our church is full of perfect people. That's even funnier, isn't it? <laughs> that our church is full of perfect people and that they are not, they are imperfect so that they, they don't fit in here. You know? That's not a place for me. So many times I've had perfect people, you know, I invite people all the time to church and they say, well, if I walk in, the, the ceiling will cave in, surely. You know? It's like a, a joke, the joke, the go-to joke of the unchurched, I think. Um, they think the church is full of perfect people. They think, therefore, they don't fit in because they are imperfect. They also think, that this again is pretty funny, that we all think exactly the same way. That we all like the exact same thing. They also think that we're all super knowledgeable about all things of the faith, that we're all Bible scholars, that we all know all the songs and the, and, and the, and the liturgies and all that, the language. Another thing that I see people run into, they also think that we all are, are we all dress up in our Sunday best every Sunday. They don't know because they're not here. They don't realize that I wear blue jeans and Chuck Taylor All-Stars every Sunday, but they think that I'm wearing a suit and tie or something like that. Had somebody last night, I uh, did a wedding in the reception, and one of our ladies from the other church took a picture of me because she'd never seen me wearing a suit and tie before. <laughs> <laughs> so they think that, you know, they don't dress like, they, that we dress different so that they can't, they can't be here because they don't dress like we do. They don't own um, fine enough clothes to be a part of us. I had somebody come to one of the services and they, I, and I can't remember if it was morning or if it was evening. Uh, I think it must have been evening. They must have thought I dressed more casual in the evening service than in the morning. So they said, do you dress different in the morning? I went, well, I dress this way all day long. But for all those reasons and more, people don't come to church because they think they won't fit in. They don't feel like they can be a part of it. They know that they're different from other people, they're from everybody else, and, and, and that that's somehow a bad thing. Some of us look certain ways, and it's different from others. Some of us can do certain things that others cannot, and that's different too. Some of us come from other places, and that makes us different from others around here. But I'm here to tell you today that diversity is a good thing. Diversity is good. Not all being the same is good. God makes us all different on purpose to be different. And we've heard a couple of passages today that talk about this. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, again, starting at verse 12, says, Just as a body, though one, has many parts... But all its parts form one body, so it is with Christ. And that is true, isn't it? And it goes to explain the importance of diversity within the church, the body of Christ, with these, with, with these conversations that Paul works into his, his message here. The body parts are talking to each other. The foot's saying, hey, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to this body. The ear's saying, but I'm not an eye, so, so I don't belong to the body. And if the whole body were an eye, then where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? What he's saying is, hey, everybody in here makes up the body of Christ. We're all a part of the body of Christ. We're all a part of the church together. And, and as, I, as I worked on this message, you're trying to imagine some of the more unimportant parts of the body. You know, we're, we're mentioning ears and eyes and feet and hands and things. But what about those... Parts like the septum. Does anybody think about their septum and how important the septum is or isn't? But whether it's your septum or your ear or your eye or your hands or your feet or whatever it is, um, we need everybody. We need all those parts. We need that diversity within the body to be the best body of Christ that we can be. Because we can't all be the eyes of the church. It wouldn't be good. You know, the eye people, they're the visionaries. Well, if they're the only ones foreseeing everything and sitting around thinking and visioning, 
who's going to do the work to get us there? You know, we need diversity within the body. So the I people, they're the visionaries in the church. They're the ones that, that can sort of see into the future and visualize the needs of the church and the community that we, we minister to and, and, and can visualize how we might meet the needs there. Ed, you know, Maybe the I people are the ones that see things that need done right now. They're the ones that notice things. So they're the I people, but we can't all be I people. Some of us are other things, and that's important too. Some of us are ear people. They listen to the needs of the church. They listen to the needs of the people in the community. Maybe you're the type of person that just by, by, by hearing somebody in their tone of voice, you can tell that they're hurting. Some of us aren't ear people. We're oblivious to that. We need to be told, you know, directly. Some of you ear people can just sort of pick up on that. What about the feet people? The feet, you know, feet get a bad rap. They don't smell very good. A lot of people don't like the looks of feet. But they're important too. The feet people are the ones that move the church along, you know, when things, when things need to happen, you know, action. They, they jump up and they, they move, you know, they act upon. We need those sorts of people too. I don't want to sit and talk about it. I want to go do it. You know, those are your those are your feet, people. They progress the church along. The feet people should never feel inferior to the other people within the church. You know, we need them, and, and, and they need you. Not that the hands aren't are unimportant. The hands, you know, they're very important. They're the caregivers. They're the comforters. They're the they hold things. They, they're the skilled laborers within the church. You know, something needs built or done or, or fixed. There's your hands, people. They hardly ever get noticed like some other parts of the church, but they're, they're, they're important to the church. They're the builders, they're the, they hold things. They lift others up. All those things that hands do. Those are your hand people. So what I'm getting at here today is whatever part you may be, uh, God tells us in his word today that you are important to the church. God has gifted you in, in a special and thoughtful, purposeful way. No matter how mundane or ordinary your gift might seem to you, you are essential. Maybe you don't get recognition for what, as, as maybe you deserve, you know, but your crown is coming. You know, your crown is coming one day. And, and, and we can't be the church, we can't be the body of Christ together without you. The Apostle Paul concludes in that verse 27, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And the roles we play in the body, what we do, that's all different as well, and that's all needed as well. The body of Christ, the church, needs diversity in both what we are, as I just explained to you, but also what we do with it. Ephesians 4 starting with verse 11, it says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. Where did that come from? That comes from the top. It comes from Jesus. To equip his people, it says, for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. In other words, we need everybody in here to be who they are and to do what Christ has gifted them to do so that his church can be the best that it can be, so that it can be the most effective it can be. For the church to be the best it can be, we all need, need to be doing the best thing that we can do for it. So if you aren't here, that messes it up. Do you see that? And if you aren't seeing, uh, if you aren't engaging, if you're here but you're not doing it, you're not engaging, then that messes that up too. And if you aren't seeing your own value in what God has gifted you to be, what God has made you, then that messes that up too. Think about it in terms of Bob Ross. If we all painted the same way, what a boring world that would be. In the body of Christ, what a boring and ineffective church it would be if we were all the exact same way in here. Diversity is beautiful. Diversity is what we need in a church. 
God made every single human being that you ever laid eyes on on this earth in his own image, in all of its diversity, so many colors, so many shapes, so many sizes. Black skin, brown skin, white skin, blue eyes, green eyes, brown eyes, tall, short, thin, round, it's all good, it's all great, and each person has a different and unique set of gifts and abilities, and that comes from God too. So, we all can do things a little differently, we all see things a little differently, and that is a good thing. And so, what if we're all, you know, what if we went over to Happy Tree Studio, and, and instead of everybody painting the same scene, which was fun to watch, but what if we were all painting, like, one canvas together? We all just painted just the sky on that. Well, that's boring, isn't it? Just the sky. I mean, you know all that other stuff on there, too, don't we? We need the clouds in the sky. We need the mountains in the background. We need the, the, the bushes, the grass, the trees. All those points, all those parts join together to make the picture together. And it's incomplete unless all those elements are there. And it's the same with the church. We were all the same. What a boring church that would be. What an ineffective church that would be. And you've heard me say this before. I truly think that we're all better together when we're all together in here together. Even if we have divergent thoughts on things, because inevitably each of us is gifted individually, differently, by God in some unique way, and we're all called to use those gifts in some way, and allow, and allow each person to do something that others cannot do as well, that's just going to better God's kingdom further along. And, and as it's affirmed in our scripture passage today, you are unique, there's no one else like you, you are gifted to do things better than others can, we need you here. Not just to sit here. We need you to be you. We need you to be who you are and do what you are gifted to do. Share your gifting. Share your perspective. Think of it in Bob Roth's terms. Think of it as God has placed a brush before you. You guys had so many different brushes the other night, didn't you? You had your two-inch brush. You had your fan brush. Uh, Don was telling me you don't do this with, with a certain fan brush. There are certain things you don't do with it. There's certain... God has given you a brush. He has set it before you. And it is time to pick up your brush and start painting. In our baptism and new membership class each year, uh, I give my students a very simple and short spiritual assessment test. It's called Discovering Your Spiritual Gifts. It's 50 questions that you can answer. Uh, and at the end of it, as you tally them up, you get a picture of your spiritual gifting. I've made one of those tests available to each one of you today. And maybe you filled out one recently because you took my class. If so, then you are off the hook. You don't need to do one if you did it earlier this year. But for most of you, um, you haven't filled one out in a while. And so I would encourage you to do that today. Um, fill that out at home. Let that help you decide and, and figure out what your gifting is, you know. What you're able to do, where your sensibilities lie. Maybe you're, maybe you're uh, let's look at one of them together. You guys got your tests out there together. You know, you might have the gift of keep helping. You know, some of you are helpers. I don't want to be the one leading it, but I want to help with it. Oh my goodness, we need helpers, you know. We need hands. We need feet. You know, encouraging. Some of you may have the gift of encouraging. Great. Who doesn't need encouragement? The gift of teaching. That's scary. But boy, do we need people to teach, you know. The gift of pastoring. That's a scary one right there, I'll tell you. <laughs> You're sensing that. Come talk to me. Help you get on a wild, wacky ride that I've been on for sure. The gift of mercy, hospitality, leading, evangelism, faith, all of those gifts. You may be gifted in some way, uh, and, I, and I'd love to help you figure out how your gifting uh, could be utilized so that this church.
this church can be the best church that it can be. And it'll take all of us to get there. So everybody who saw that brush sitting in front of them and picked it up and started painting it red, let's pray. Lord God, we come to you today and we realize that we were all created in your image. You made us all different. You made us all unique. Gifted us in some pretty incredible ways if you really think about it. And Lord, we are here together. We're better together. And so, Lord, I ask that you first help us to see our own intrinsic value within ourselves. To see that you created us marvelously, gifted us in some amazing ways. And help us to see that same value in others. Help us to recognize and cultivate the unique and diverse gifts in each one of us. Lord, help us to figure out how we can use ourselves and our abilities to engage in the work you're doing. Here within the confines of this church, but also in the community around us, in the world out there. Help us to paint in our own unique way. Help us all to paint together to make the most complete and beautiful picture we can of your church, of your body. And it's in the name of the one who created us and gifted us, died for us, resurrects us, and calls us. Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen.